this is the actual sound of the Victoria Falls. It is hard to believe that this placid water, which is a little upstream, turns into this heavy fall. The first recorded exploration of the Zambezi River was done by David Livingston. He descended the Zambezi to its mouth and in the course of this journey found the Victoria Falls. His statue is prominently placed near the fall. Later, Imperial Airways would offer the solid flying boat service that would transport visitors in comfort from Southampton to South Africa. The flight took seven days stopping at Augusta, Cairo, Luxor, Khartoum, Port Bell and Victoria Falls. Its final destination was Val Dam outside Johannesburg. The Zambezi is one of the finest and least spoilt rivers in the world. It finally gets discharged into the Indian Ocean. The falls keep generating a permanent flow of mist which makes the surrounding look like a rainforest. This forest-like area has been well preserved and maintained by the authorities, which in turn encourages tourism. It was in this forest that we saw this green wood hoopoe. Later, we saw a trumpeteer hornbill. It was sitting motionless on a tree. We tried taking a video, but the only motion that could be captured was his eye blinking. Speaking of hornbills, we also saw this southern ground hornbill, which looked like a turkey. He was foraying the ground looking for snakes. Very what? They are very rare. Oh, oh yeah? Very rare. They are looking for snakes. Yeah, they eat snakes. Really? Huh? Snakes don't eat them? No. <laughs> what kind of a snakes? Well, they're, going, they're, they're looking for black mamba, for cobra, papada. But they're immune or what? Pardon? Are they immune to the poison as well? Well, they bought uh, keratin, so if they get beaten, they will die. Ah, they die? They die, yes. Oh. But they know how to uh, defend themselves. Oh, so if yeah. they get beaten on the bill, no problem, it's keratin. Oh, okay. If they get beaten on the uh, claws, yeah. claws, it's no problem. But uh, you will see them dancing with uh, a snake trying yeah. to bite. Yeah. They avoid that soft uh, flesh. So if the snake catches on the yeah. or on the claw, it's fine. Coming back to the falls, there is a plaque placed here, remembering Sri Chinmay as the peace falls. Many use this as a good backdrop for everlasting pictures. The main fall is the largest waterfall and certainly the most majestic view of the falls. A wide curtain of water with a peak flow rate of 700,000 cubic meters per minute. 
the sheer volume over the height of the falls is so great that before getting anywhere near the ground, the water is buffeted by strong rising winds and turned into mist. If you stand here for more than a minute, you are sure to get fully drenched. A comparative view of the full stretch showing the different falls and their height. Horseshoe end, the waterfall is less, and that makes it the best time to conduct whitewater rafting. Don't miss the lone tree that stands at the edge of the cliff. Trees grow in the most unexpected places. At viewpoint number 16, you get to see the railway bridge that links the two countries, Zimbabwe and Zambia. The bridge was the brainchild of Cecil Rhodes. Even though he never visited the falls and died before the construction of the bridge began, Rhodes is recorded as instructing the engineers to build the bridge across the Zambezi where the trains as they pass will catch the spray of the falls. The name Mosi Oatunya, taken from the Lozi language, means the smoke that thunders and this is the traditional name of the Victoria Falls. We crossed back to Botswana from Zimbabwe and continued our onward journey along with the wild animals, stopping in between for coffee breaks. Next stop, the camp at Savuti.